Hey, everybody. I have a fascinating interview here. We were just chatting. This is amazing. I want to welcome Christine Hardberg to the live stream today. Congratulations on your new book launch. Thank you so much. Thank you. You had a, you had a in-person event last night. We were just chatting. The bookstore owner said it was one of the best they've had in years. Who yep. came? Talk to us about what it was like. And this book is called Art History for Everybody. Well, it was an uh, amazing event. The, the house was packed. It's a third place book, Ravenna, in Seattle. It's an indie bookstore. And uh, they have had frequently events, but it was like people had to stand in the back. And um, there were people who have taken my courses, but there were also some of my friends from the Seattle area. But mostly there were people I have never seen before who were just so interested. I so. love it. And you are Norwegian. How cool is that? But you're, but you're here. How long have you been here in the States? Well, this time I've been here since January. Um, I used to live in the States 20-something uh, years ago. I lived here for two and a half years. One of my kids is born in Washington State. And then uh, I keep coming back like every six or seven years or so. so. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm seeing our team. Some of the team is watching. We have Dana, we have Tanisha, we have Ricky. But our whole team has been blown away by this book. What is the book about and, and why should people read this? Well, like the title says, Art History for Everyone, I want to convey that art and art history is not difficult and boring and something for the selected few. Um, mm -hmm. It's really for everyone. Um, it, and I want to lower that bar, so to say, so that it's not so intimidating for people to go yes. to museums yes. and galleries and just say that, you know, you can just go in there, ask questions. I love it. I love how in one button here I can click and I can be in, in uh, I'm guessing this is Norwegian. <laughs> this is the Norwegian. Uh, yeah. And you can choose the English up there. You I can... love it. I love it. And you have you have books, you have lectures, podcasts, courses, traveling. What was the thing that sparked art for you? How and when, uh, how old were you? I, you know, I frankly can't remember because I feel it's always been there. As a little girl, I loved images. I was ten years old when I started. I got my first camera. I started doing photography. I have been drawing and painting all my life, but I also love to see art, but not necessarily see art because of the way it's painted or techniques or so on, but the stories. To me, it was always yeah. stories. Yeah. You have one of your students, Jennifer, who just popped on. She's from the UK, and she says, I've taken a few of Christine's art, online art courses. I have learned a lot. What do you teach in your courses? Well, mm, in a way, I teach the same that I do in my book, just much longer, obviously. So I have one course on the Renaissance, I have one on the Baroque, and one of the Impressionism. And yeah, those are uh, artistry expressions that I also explain very well in my, both in my book and in my courses. I try to use everyday language, but we do need a few um, expressions that are typical for the field, and I try to explain them so it's not difficult at all so yeah this is awesome so you have you even have a waiting list so folks you got to check this out i i actually remember in college my fine arts teacher dr pete gano and okay. i loved it and i never would have taken it unless it was required i'm so glad that my college required it because I feel that it made me actually a better thinker, a better creator. Do you, do you find that to be the case? That if you study art, you actually can become a more well-rounded person? What other things does it bleed into? Absolutely. Because art and art history taps into so much. And we, can, we take with us what we have in our life. And I also find that art and art history helps us not, well, yeah, for thinking, for ideas, but also for like the hard things in life. I think that's some of the most important. There are artworks who really can help us to deal with yeah. grief, sorrow. Yeah. 
Wow. Wow. You know, I just took recently a online experience with the Holocaust Museum and I saw it on Facebook and I'm like, wow, I got to take that because I got to I got to learn about this. I've never been there. And they actually took us into the uh, literal Auschwitz camp. Mm -hmm. I feel that with art and the metaverse and Apple just launching their new um, Vision Pro and Meta, I feel like our generation needs art more than ever now. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we live in this digital world where it's people like you, Christine, that we actually have to thank because you're keeping that legacy alive. What, what do you think about that? Yeah, that's interesting. You know, mo most of the art that we see in museums, etc., it has been around for hundreds of years. And I think you're right that we risk in a very few years to lose all that because we think that, no, you know, just artificial intelligence can make the art. We don't need it anymore. It's old. But the thing is, it's a reason it has stood the time. Mm. The same with so much. You can go with classical music or whatever. Classical means that it has stood the time. It's still relevant. And I find when I bring people, because when I bring people to Paris or Florence or Rome or whatever, or in my courses, people who never ever knew anything about art and they see on, on the screen in the course or in my book. And some of them might even start crying because it's wow. Yeah. It's something that hits you, something you didn't know that you needed. Yeah. Well, did, did you know about a movie um, called Equilibrium? You ever hear that movie? No, I haven't. Okay. So there's a movie called Equilibrium and it has Christian Bale in it. He was, of course, in Batman as well. The movie didn't make it very popular, but it was it was incredible. And here's what they did. Uh, they said that a future society, that all of the evil was because of emotion. Mm -hmm. So that what they did is they would make people not feel emotion by taking a, a pill. And what they did, Christine, is they hid all the art. So they, they would hide all the art because they knew that you, you when you told me about someone just having crying, I'm like, whoa, that reminded me. So what they would do is they would they would basically burn all the art or hide all the art because they didn't want people to feel emotion. Because if they felt emotion, then they thought, well, you know, we opened them up to bad emotions, evil or something. So what happens in this scene is that Christian Bale sees art and he begins to feel for the first time. And then he says, I'm going to just stop taking the pill. Oh. And, and, and he, and he has a breakthrough and he actually then, you know, saves the society. But I think you're onto something that why do people have emotion when they see art? I, I truly believe that art uh, taps into what is not about rational thinking. And we are so much about, in our society, in our age, so much about rational thinking and, and everything has to be logical. And the thing is that we as human beings are so much more. And just think about it. Our dreams, our, our emotions, hate, love, sorrow, happiness, regret, all these things. And, and faith also, everything that has to do with not being a rational, yeah, rational thinking. And art taps into that. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. I think that people are missing out when they cut off that side of themselves. But let's talk about this. There's a whole group of people that actually don't want to be in that realm because they feel that it's dangerous. They feel like emotions and art, you it opens you up to things you can't control. But is that the whole point, Christine? I think we need it to be human beings. I think just like that movie you talked about, if we cut that dimension, emotions, et cetera, out of our lives, what would we be without that? And wow. you know, there's this Irish playwright and um, author, George Bernard Shaw. He said, you use a glass mirror to see your face, but you use works of art to see your soul. Oh, that's good. Mm. That's good. Wow. I like that. Okay. 
So you you got this book. Uh, I got to ask questions about it because I know our team's been yeah. working very uh, tightly with you. Is the book is the book color? Is the book black and white? Um, oh. I'm, I'm taking it's like lots of color images. I it's actually for me it's uh, it's really important that the book should be good to, to study, good to look at. It so I very early said also that the, the images here are not bare illustrations. They they are they carry the book in a way. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Oh I love it. So even this layout where it goes across the pages. Mm. How do you look at art? And uh, wow, this looks like a really good book. What What do you hope people do with this book? Well, um, I hope they, to start with, I hope they don't feel intimidated by it. You know yeah. what you didn't see on that PDF or something? Because this is the start and the end of the book. But in the main part is actually like full-size paintings I'm gonna, bring it up. I'm gonna bring it up i can bring yeah, it up because i want to show people that um i want them to not feel like it's uh if they have bought the book or when they buy the book they shouldn't feel like it's a burden that oh no i have to read it just let it be there like an invitation and they can open and read like one page or one chapter or two pages and that's okay you don't have to start with the start and end with the ending you can mm. just wander around in it I see what you're saying. So you're basically saying uh, here in the States, sometimes we call it like a coffee table book. Yeah. Is that, is that, but, but you're saying that you can jump in at any point. You and... can. Yeah, absolutely. But also I made a point of not making the book too big because I don't want it to be intimidating and thinking, oh, I will never get through this. So it, I don't, you know, it's too hard. So it's not that big. And the two first chapters are about how to see art and why we have art a little bit what we just talked about and then i go into the different artworks and and obviously i can't talk about everything then the book would be like uh, very <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, i have picked out and uh, yeah what i've what i've done i picked out a few or not a few there's a lot like, there are a lot but what i teach in the book also is the restaurant method and that is really connected to this you have to choose oh that's good can you see my screen? Yes, I can. So I found I found your manuscript. I'm gonna I'm gonna go through it a little bit. Um, so let's let's take us in. So basically, uh, how do you look at art? Do we need art? The periods and trends. Then you move into the Renaissance, Baroque. Wow, look at this. So you really give us a, a good sampling. Yeah. Absolutely. And um, the how to look at art is actually very important. So I, that, that's why I have that first in the book. There's then, a restaurant method that you were talking uh, about. I like that. Okay. And then you, you say, what is art? Ooh, look at that. 1999, the Berlin Wall. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Why'd you, why'd you choose this one? Just because I want to emphasize that we need art more than anything when we are hurting, mm. when we are struggling in life, when the world is struggling. So this is the Berlin Wall, like you said, and I, we see that during all times that when the world is struggling, we need art more than anything. Wow. Why, why are people listening to sad music if they have a breakup or watching a sad movie? It's because of that. It's the same thing. We or but an image can also comfort us. So yeah. This is man, this is I love this. The quotes too that you put in there, amazing. Every child is an artist. The problem is to remain an artist once he grows up. Wow. Um, I like this. Ooh, ooh, there you go. There's that one that you said. It's so good. And then you have these call outs as well. Yeah. So you kind of have yeah. I like I try to teach the People have maybe heard about the Stendhal syndromes. I just want to, you know. Teach. I've never heard it. Can you tell me about it? Yeah, it's actually a French author, 19th century French author, who came to Florence. Florence is actually the next chapter there uh, where the Renaissance started. He went there and he was, he felt dizzy. He felt like he's lightheaded and um, really? didn't feel well. I think he had to lay down somewhere. Wow. Uh, 
they, he was overwhelmed with the beauty and the art that he hadn't seen ever in his life. Um, and we wow. experience every year people coming there and actually having to be admitted to a mental hospital for a little while. <laughs> wow. Just a little while. And it's like a few people every year, but they call it the Stendhal syndrome. And it's typical. I think the typical patient is a middle aged man who is only caught up in his own life, his business, and don't have ever seen this art before. And when he comes there and suddenly surrounded by it, it's he wasn't ready for it. It's it's they it's literally breathtaking. Yes. It takes that's your breath the thing. Away. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. This is amazing. I'm headed to France in seven days. Oh yeah. And what should I do in Paris? The I have a day where I'm not doing anything. What should I do there? Well, if you have a day, uh, you sh if you want, you can go to the Louvre, which, which is the big museum. But then if you go in there, you use the restaurant method. Have we already talked about that here now? Or do I don't remember. But anyway, no. I, I, should I explain that? Because it's really important. The restaurant yes. method is to treat a big museum like it were a very famous, wonderful restaurant. No yeah. matter how good the restaurant is, you will never buy or eat every single item on the menu. Wow. Okay. You, would be, you would be so full, you would be sick. And the, the same thing happens in a museum or in a city. Just pick out something and take that in and enjoy it. Take your time. Pick a few artworks, a few rooms. So if you do go to the Louvre, do a little research on their website or ask and choose like one or two rooms, a few artworks, and then you go out and have lunch and you remember. Wow. Okay. So, so you can't have this FOMO, this fear of missing yeah. out. Ooh, I can't see everything. That no, because, a lot, you know, anyway, if you wanted to see everything in the Louvre, for instance, or Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, you couldn't in one sitting. It's too big. Gotcha. So and even if you tried to, it would just be a succession of images. It will all blend in your head. Just like if you try to eat everything, it would just, you know, you wouldn't remember anything in the end. There you go. Look at that. You just told me to go there and there's yeah. one of, there's, that is shocking to think that this statue was around before Christ. Christ. I know. It's amazing. <laughs> That's crazy. That's and this crazy. is August. This is the emperor, uh, Augustus. Yes. Oh, wow. Wow. So you literally in your book, you have the art, but then you basically interpret it for us. What's yeah. happening? And I also, yeah, I, I really, and I try to show how it changed. If you see the image you just saw there, which is Mary and the baby from medieval age, and then you can go ahead a little bit and you will find that it changed a lot when you came into the mm -hmm. Renaissance. Then you have, so, um, because, yeah, Renaissance was an exciting time. Uh, so that's, I, love I, I, could it. Write, I could write to her, what is it? Yeah. So but you yeah. even include you you even include in this scripture. Yeah, oh yeah, because you know, when you when you go to the Louvre or to any big art museum in the world actually, it's like you can't escape images that are connected to the Bible or to Christianity because the church was actually the employer of the artists for hundreds of years. There wouldn't wow. be artistic workshops in Europe if it hadn't been for the church because they asked for the art and then Art, to be an artist became a thing to be a, a um and and you even say like look this painting which i never would have seen this they're not wearing shoes and you basically explain that that's symbolic that is yeah. so interesting wow because it's it's in all big religions of the world to take off your shoes when you are in in front of something holy that's common well not anymore in, in Western Christian churches, but it in many other religions, it's still like that. And it it's literally says in the in the Bible that, you know, I think it was Moses, take off your sandals or take off your shoes. Oh, yeah, yeah, with the burning bush, right? Yes, yes. yes. That's, you will see it in so many artworks. If you see a shoe or a sandal somewhere on the ground, you can just start searching. You will find baby Jesus somewhere or it, it's just a hint to the viewer. Wow, we call that, I know the young people today in video games, they call that Easter eggs. 
Yes. Where exactly. it's, where it, where yeah. it's a hidden yep. meaning or something. Yeah. And you have so much of that. And I, I teach that in the book too, a little bit of it, because there are so many things like that. You see a woman with red dress and a blue cloak. It's probably Mary. It's like nine, 99% because that's. Wow. Wow. Okay. So I want to take people back to your website because we just have a few more minutes, but you do this uh, courses, you offer a few times a year, you have mm -hmm. some lectures, you have a podcast. Where do you see all this going? Like what, I almost feel like you're a gift to the world here. <laughs> where, where do you see all this going? I just want to continue. I just want to continue to do this. It's, it's, a, it's a gift to be able to do it too, because I, I love it. I love to do this. So my podcast for now is only in Norwegian. It's very, it's a baby podcast. It just came out a few weeks ago, but people have you now begged me to do it in English as well. So I will try to do this in the fall to have the podcast out in English. Wow. I love it. We were even chatting before we started today that uh, you've already had people request that your book be translated. And so Tanisha, Tanisha works with our foreign team, but we're going to talk with our foreign team about getting this out into other languages. What are some of those languages you'd like to see the book in? Well, people have specifically asked for Italian and French and German. Okay. Uh, Italian, yeah. French and German. Okay. Very good. Very good. I love it. So how did you how did you even find Igniting Souls? I don't know this true this full story. Well, I actually um, I saw I was at a um, digital event a mm. few years ago and I saw one of your talks about okay. Igniting Souls and I just realized, wow, why haven't I even thought about that? That I should write a book about this. It's so it's just there. Mm -hmm. I have everything. I just have to write. Yeah. So then, yeah. That's just, amazing. Okay. And you have a great Instagram. You're on Facebook. You're on YouTube. You're essentially all over the world. And I love the fact that you're travel, you travel. How much do you travel, do you think? Well, this half year has been completely, uh, you could say crazy, but I would say fun. Uh, I've, been, <laughs> I've been in Japan, in Brazil. I've been in Italy. Uh, I've been a little trip to Norway, but I live in U.S. right now. I will go back to Norway permanently in July, but okay. I will probably come back. And I'm thinking about living part-time in France. I used to live in Paris, and I'm, I will probably do that again, like half-time Paris, half-time Norway, something like that. I love it. Are you not going to be in France um, on June 30th, are you? I know that would be fun, but I'm not. I'm yeah, still here. Okay, that's yeah. okay. No worries. Um, I love this. I I want uh, our team to respond as well because they've they've been able to work with you, and they've seen your incredible work. I want to show your Instagram here as well because your Instagram, I'm looking at it right now. It really is. It really is that work of art. But here's you. Um, you uh, your book's already on bookshelves. How cool was that last night doing that um, event? Was that was that cool? Oh, it was, it was wonderful. It was really wonderful. It was a great feeling. I was a little bit nervous ahead of time, but when I started talking, it was just wonderful to see all the faces. Wow. They they asked questions, and they were so. I, I thought I was talking too long that I had to stop and cut, and they were no, keep going. <laughs> and, what was the, the ages? You know, like they if you were, were to say there was young and old, were, were there? They were young? old ages. There were, I think the youngest one was maybe 11 years old and the oldest, I didn't, I can't exactly picture, but older people, yeah. Yeah. like maybe 80 or plus. Wow. Ooh, that's so good. I love these quotes too. The role of the artist is to ask questions not to answer them so you put why do you choose the different images and quotes that you do here i'm sure there's some intention behind mm, i like to say that but you see until now it has been very like um just happening what i feel like i uh, i might be a little bit more intentional but until now this is just coming i like it i like it even even, even you eating here is a work of art oh my gosh like <laughs> 
That looks amazing. Um, but you know, let's talk about that here as we close today. Like that's, isn't that one of the things you hope people realize is that art is all around them? Oh yes. It, in, it's probably already there in your home and in your bookshelves. I have people come to me and said, oh, I didn't know I had this book in my bookshelf. I know I've had it for years. I never opened it. I know I read it. Or, or I have this one lady who had a videotape and she found this old VHS player and she was able to play it about art somewhere or just whatever they have around them in their backyard, in their town. So Yes, yes. I want uh, you to look at this comment, really powerful comment. I know this guy, I used to be his pastor way back, <laughs> way long ago, but he says, I can't wait to get your book. I represent the museum and gallery in Greenville, South Carolina. Are you reading this? Wow. Look wow. at this connection. Oh my gosh. Uh, that's cool. That's cool. I would like to go there. I would like to go to South Carolina and give a talk. That would be fun. I want to show you a picture, um, a video, a couple things here really quick. So this is last week when I was cycling. Wow. And it's a rainbow. I, I literally was cycling. Wow. And all of a sudden I looked to my left and there's a rainbow. And I'm like, okay, that's some slick art. But then watch, watch this here. This is pretty cool. Watch this little, little, little B, little B, little B. Here we, here we go. Here's the ocean. So what I'm saying to you is like, I used to be too busy, Christine. I used to be too busy to realize art was all around me. But I feel like today your gift to us is to say, look, slow down, get your book, listen to the podcast, get the lectures, but, but open your eyes to the art all around you. Absolutely. I love it. Well, anything that you want to say as we close, I'll give you the last word. We're putting your website here. But what do you want to tell people kind of as they leave for the day? I would say don't be afraid of what you don't know already. Kid, mm -hmm. Be like you used to be. You know, all children, they love to learn and ask questions. And they are not intimidated by what, they, by what they don't know. And no questions are stupid. Ask me anything. Just reach out or don't be afraid. Okay. That's so good. Well, everybody, thanks for joining us. And I truly believe she picked a brilliant title. Art history is for everyone. I feel more enriched. You told me about that syndrome. I've never heard that before. I love to learn things. So uh, David's already saying, how do I connect with Christine? So yeah, we are going to connect you with, with people. Please. Here's Please your website me. as well. You're on Instagram. You're on social media. So David, I would encourage you to go over to the Facebook. You'll see all these comments um, that are posted, but reach out to Tanisha yeah. to connect you too. Wonderful. Thanks, Christine. Thanks for trusting us as your publisher. This is one of our, our well, best books. Thank you, Carrie. I'm so happy. And we, did we say that it reached uh, first on Amazon? No, we didn't say that. Yeah, listen, we did not say that. So you, you, you became... An Amazon bestseller. That, my friend, is <laughs> difficult. Oh my gosh. I'm going to show, we'll show that here as we close. You got a number one new release. I'm looking at it right now. And uh, in art study and teaching, you already have three five star reviews. It just came out. Folks, go over here. You now can rate it, review it. I'm going to follow the author. Boom. And uh, we are so proud of you. Oh, look, I even purchased a copy already. So that means it's coming to my house. <laughs> so thank you. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, Gary. Thank we'll see you, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.